From a studio high above the clouds of the Okanagan Valley, this is the Cannabis Podcast. Exploring the world of Canadian cannabis culture, one toke at a time. Now, here's your host and bud tender, Gary Johnston. And welcome back. Pleased to have you back if this is your first time joining us. Well, an especially warm welcome. Thanks for coming to the Cannabis Podcast, where we're going to talk about all things cannabis for the next 30 or 40 minutes or so, depending on how much energy I happen to have towards the end of the podcast. This is Canada. Canada has been declared the most cannabis-friendly country in the world, according to the Weed Blog. We'll touch on that story today. Plus, I'm going to have a chat with my son, Ian, who you know is the composer and performer of the Cultivar Corner Jingle. Check in with him how things have been going through COVID-19, and especially we're going to concentrate on a discussion on the humidity packs, which some people are inserting into their cannabis. Even some of the legal cannabis you buy has some inserted. Talk about the benefits, advantages, and some of the science behind those packs. Then we're going to stop at Cultivar Corner for what I have to be honest with was a strain that literally blew me away. I was astounded with this one. Citizen Stash Mac 1 is what we're going to cover on Cultivar Corner today. I truly was blown away by that one. Also a discussion about the dosage of edibles. As I get back to work in the cannabis retail world, the discussion having with many of the guests who come in is that Health Canada might not have got it right with their 10 milligram per package limit. And by that, I mean the they are ensuring that the black market thrives with the legal limits. We'll have a bit of a discussion on that. There is a town in northern Ontario that doesn't like the smell of cannabis. And they're trying to do something about that. And if I have time, I'm going to flash back onto a story that I was reminded of by a listener about the first time that I smoked a joint. So all of that and more is coming your way on episode 46 of the Cannabis Podcast. And let's start with a story from thegrowthop.com, where the weed blog has declared that Canada is the most cannabis-friendly country in the world. What is the best country in the world? Well, we know that. Canadians won't need to travel the world to find out. And given current travel restrictions, that's probably a good thing anyways. We only have to look at our own front doors. Among the very first countries to legalize medicinal marijuana and the second to greenlight recreational cannabis, Canada's progressive views on weed have led to the number one spot in new rankings issued by the Weed Blog. To help navigate cannabis-friendly climbs, the Weed Blog developed the Cannabis Friendliness Index. This index provides a rundown on cannabis legalization worldwide and lets potential visitors know where cannabis use is most accepted. The final ranking takes into account a country's prevalence of use, plus 100, the legality of recreational cannabis, plus another 100, the legality of medicinal marijuana, plus 50, and punishments for use in trafficking, minus 50, making 250 the top score to be had. And Canada's score right now is sitting at 175. That's a grade A. And Canada rated higher than any other country. The next four spots, Uruguay, Georgia, South Africa, and Guam. Perhaps predictable since all have legalized cannabis, although Georgia and South Africa have no legal system for selling bud. Of the 100 most visited countries, 61 have some form of law legalizing or decriminalizing possession of small amounts of marijuana, according to the Weed Blog. So whatever country is on your list, however, it's critically important to take the time before actually in a country to learn about its local culture. This may prove especially handy if visitors, when current travel restrictions are lessened, are exploring countries where cannabis use is verboten and potential penalties very harsh. For example, possessing 500 grams of weed in Singapore may result in the death penalty. And when it comes to considering whether or not to cross borders while carrying weed, really, it's always best just to say no. And boy, is that ever true, especially if you're traveling internationally, of course, when things open up again. Don't ever fly with cannabis when you're leaving the country. <laughs> So there you go, Canada sitting in the number one position. As always, you can find the link to this story at CannabisPodcast.com, and you can dive into it a little deeper if you so desire. I found it an interesting contrast with that being stating that Canada is the most friendly cannabis country in the world to now look at a story from the CBC that is talking about a town in northern Ontario that wants to get rid of their smelly pot plants. 
This is a northern Ontario town that's looking for a way to make those smelly cannabis plants illegal in our legalized world. Seriously, this is happening? (laughs) West Nipissing Council wants to draft a bylaw to regulate the odor from plants that citizens can legally grow themselves. Councillor Lee Senecal puts the issue on the table after getting complaints from several residents in Sturgeon Falls. I don't even have to get out. I just rolled down my window, she says, of going to check out the skunk-like stink. It's a very strong smell. I could have gotten a buzz. Well, actually, you can't get a buzz just from smelling it, but it's nice of you to think that. She says the right to enjoy her own property is a basic right and wants to see cannabis smell listed as a nuisance in a town bylaw, similar to what the city of Hamilton has already passed. So much for being a cannabis-friendly country, I guess. She is a firm believer that everyone has their rights. To quote her, I mean, I have the right to drink beer, but I don't have the right to throw the can of beer at the neighbor or make a party at all times of day or night, says Senecal, who would like to see the restriction apply only in residential areas. West Nipissing Councillor Jeremy Segwin is worried this will add to the town's conservative approach to legal weed. It is one of the few municipalities in northeastern Ontario where smoking a joint on the sidewalk is illegal, but smoking tobacco is not. (laughs) What is with our country? I thought we legalized cannabis back on October 17th of 2018. What the heck? Even 17. I don't even remember the date anymore. (laughs) Segment says it's very tricky for a municipality to regulate smells and compares unpleasant cannabis odors with those coming from the farm fields that surround his home village of Werner. So there's a definite smell that goes on there, and it's yearly. Nobody complains about it because that's part and parcel, he says. West Nipissing Council is expected to debate the proposed bylaw at a meeting in early June. That's another indication that even though cannabis has been determined, or rather, Canada has been determined as the most friendly cannabis country in the world, apparently there are still pockets... <laughs> where we have some issues and people don't really want to be quite so friendly with cannabis. So remember that the next time you decide you're going to grow some cannabis in West Nipissing in northeastern Ontario, make sure you pick a strain that doesn't smell. From the cannabis-infused studio in the clouds, this is the Cannabis Podcast. Hey, I recognize that voice. And in fact, you may recognize that voice soon too. My next guest has been patiently waiting And I think it's time I introduce him now. From the Cannabis Podcast Studio in Vancouver, once more to the Cannabis Podcast, please welcome my son, Ian. Hello. Thanks for having me. So you have been off work for a little while, uh, thanks to COVID-19. How are things going? Yeah, I think I've been off work. They laid me off March 15th or March 16th. Um, Wow. Yeah. Yeah, because I work at a bar, so so they don't want us to be open. And so I've been on the, the CRB thing and... Right. I've been just home trying to learn stuff. I'm taking courses and trying to teach myself some skills. And yeah, it's it's true. odd, but I'm but I'm I'm good. I'm fine. Yeah, it is odd. It, it is absolutely odd. And and so, how is the training going? Ian's training to do some web development work. Yeah, it's great. That? I love it. It's 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 great. It feels a lot like learning and playing music to me. Um, it's great. I'm just doing I these bet. kind of boot camp online courses, a bunch of different yeah. stuff, just trying to like pick up like a, a peppering of different skills, like front and back end stuff. It's really yeah. fun. I really like it. Good for you. I'm glad to hear that you're doing that. That's, that's a cool way to spend your time and, and make it, make it a useful opportunity. Yeah. It's been as good as it could, as good as it could be. Yeah. And that, that, that's the situation for, for everyone. Uh, of course. And the odd thing is that I actually went back to work and as you know, in, in this weird time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, essential service. Yeah, an essential service, and and we're performing our essential service, and this is actually my first day off after going back to work full time. So, oh, nice. Um, it's it's different for me too, because you know everybody's still in this lockdown mode, and and yet I've been getting up and going to work, and luckily it's close by, so it's not a real big uh, long yeah. walk and stuff. Yeah, all the shops here have been pretty busy because all the like kind of no like they kind of shut down all the non legit ones. And there's mm-hmm. only a couple that stayed open during this, so they're all pretty busy here. Okay, so so most of the um, shall we say gray market stores have have closed down. Yeah, like that that oh, what's the guy Dana Dana Larson Dana his, Larson yeah yeah his store shut down. I think they're doing like they just opened up for like pickup if you have an online account, but most of the yeah. kind of gray area stores are shut down. And so there's just a couple that are still around downtown Vancouver. 
Yeah, still keeping the need supplied, which is good to see. Mm-hmm. So one yeah. of the things that, that we chatted about last time uh, we talked, and you raised this, the whole prospect of what we're seeing in some of our legal cannabis now, packed into those little packages. The yeah. Humidity been, packs. Yeah, the Bovida, I think they're called. That's that's one of the brands. Uh, yeah, it's a brand name, I guess. Yeah, and and when did you first start to see those showing up in, in what you were buying? Well, I've just, I've, I've just heard, um, like waiting in line, I've, I've heard like half dozen times the clerk, um, the, the, is getting asked about, about the buds and often okay. will, will recommend like throwing in a Bovida package. They always say Bovida. Um, yeah. and it's, and it makes me feel, and it makes me feel like, uh, like I'm supposed to, like, this is like a, I guess I'm confused if it's a best practice or if if it's just something that people are doing because of lots of dry pot. But I finally did get a, yeah. a one canister from I think this Whistler company, and okay. and inside the canister was like a one of these Bovita things you're supposed to open up and just leave it in there. And yeah, I guess it I guess it works. I'm just curious if it's if it's the way I'm supposed to be doing this or if this is just kind of. I don't think you're the only one with that question either, because I mean, I've I've had a few of them. I've used them a little bit, and and so I dug into a bit of the science to try to figure out, you know, mm. what the advantage of it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bovita is probably the best known one. I think we've all heard that one before. I was actually a little surprised as I did some digging around, and there is another one that has dropped onto the market, and it is called Integra, mm. and and their product is called Integra Boost. Okay. Um, but but the idea is the same behind all of them. And I guess I hadn't really realized the science behind it. Here's a simple science. Because the saturation level of certain salts that exist in water naturally regulate the humidity in an immediate environment, that's what this is based on. That's what's inside those packages is a magical combination of water and salt Hmm. So that when it's placed in that container, it either emits or draws in moisture from the surrounding air based on that humidity level. And that's why you know that if you if you have one of those packs in your in your jar, it becomes brittle, it's used up. It, it's time right. to replace it. Right, right, um, right. And, but there's lots of debate. And that's the other thing is I, as I started diving into this, there are those that, uh, for example, one of the uh, pieces on Reddit that I took a peek at, peek at they were talking about whether or not having that Bovita pack in the cannabis is changing the aroma of it. So therefore it's affecting the terpenes. The debate in one guy who was doing a test and he was trying to do a a straight head to head test with uh, the Integra boost. And he could not detect any discernible difference in, in the aroma of it, but I've seen some debate on Mm -hmm. Twitter. Some people think that no, it doesn't help the cannabis. Many people do. Yeah, what's been your experience with them so far? Have you you noticed any difference in in the pot? Well, yeah, no. The I only, I only had the one, like, because I don't even know where to to buy them or anything. It just it just seems like right. this thing that the clerks are all referencing as if as if I should know what it is. Um, but the one the <laughs> one I funny. had, it did work. Like it, yeah, it kept it like less dry for sure. Yeah, but it just it just kind of seems like it's a reaction to a lot of these canisters being like packed six months ago or even longer and Mm -hmm. just being like dry pot. And and so they're kind of trying to, to make it better by saying that this is the way it should work. And I'm just, yeah, I just wasn't sure if it is what I should be doing or it's yeah, Yeah. it's just murky. No, I I think you, you've described it pretty accurately. I think the, the discussion really started in a robust form as we were getting all of that really dry cannabis that was that was coming to market i guess it makes sense too because like they do have like for fancy cigars there's like humidifiers and stuff so yeah. they they it is a, a thing to keep the it's true the, we sell this in in fact this beautiful humidor for for cannabis mm-hmm. this beautiful wood humidor for mm-hmm. for storage and then you're right same thing with with cigars and and such trying to keep that humidity level right out there okay. And then there's the debate over, is it 58% that you want to use or is it 62%? Oh, right. There's different levels. There's different levels and, of course, differing differing sizes, depending on how much cannabis you want to uh, restore the humidity or reduce mm. the humidity, depending on the circumstances. Right. When right. I cured last year, I was using some 58 
uh, in my jars just to try okay. to keep it at that, at that constant level. And then I didn't, I didn't maintain using them as, as it went into long-term storage. All, all my mm. bun just kind of sat in, in the jars and, and it was not too bad coming out, but hmm. it is definitely a debate. Um, and, and, and uh, I'm glad you raised the question because uh, as I'm, as I'm sure most people have the same question and are wondering about that little packet and whether or not they should get them and now yeah. where can you get them? We, we sell them in the store. Um, okay. So, so they are available to purchase in a pack. I think most stores do have them okay. uh, available in some degree. I guess the other thing that I want to now explore is take a look at this, at this other one, this Integra boost and see right. if there is yeah. a, a, a decidedly different hmm. outcome or result. Yeah. Hard yeah, to say. It's interesting. Very interesting. So what other projects are you working on these days, Ian? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm always making music. I've been making of course. kind of kind of like electronic instrumental kind of beat type music lately. Um, oh, cool. Trying to stay busy. Yeah. Like trying to teach myself stuff, making websites. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's yeah. cool. It's, it's fun just, when you, it's fun when you do, when you try something and it works, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's great. It's, I've always dabbled. I've, or I've, I've enjoyed tinkering since I was a kid, but I really am enjoying uh, learning to code. It's great. Yeah, it's nice that you're using the, the the time that you've been given, if I can use that expression, um, yeah, and, and using it a way to to better yourself. That's very cool. It's it's great timing. Cool. Yeah. What's the uh, what's the favorite weed you've you've in uh, smoked lately? Um, I got one recently from a a delivery service here in Vancouver. Actually, um, oh wow, yeah, it's neat. They, they, in two hours, it's at your at your door, um, and it's. <laughs> It's a sativa dominant hybrid called Citrique. Citrique, I've I've had that before. That's really nice. Yeah, it's really nice. It's it's a good like daytime get stuff done kind of. Absolutely, that would be a good one for you to work on your web programming and mm -hmm. all that stuff. Give totally. you that focus to dive right into it. Yeah. So there's so there's a delivery. See, we can the and they, you know this is the other change that COVID has brought uh, to the industry in general. In BC, prior to COVID-19, you could not go onto any website for any store and pick your product and, and, and have it reserved for pickup. Right. Now, of course, you can. Almost all uh, cannabis stores, uh, the one I work at included, you can go onto the website, choose your order, submit it for pickup, and then drop into the store and you're, you're in and out very quickly. Mm -hmm. But we can still do no delivery. So that, that surprises me. That Oh, yeah. That, I'm sure it's happening not legit. Down there. Yeah. Yeah, well, of course not. There's still that. There's still that gray side. <laughs> yeah, I only know about it because I saw they targeted me with a Facebook ad, and it worked. Smart. <laughs> yeah, targeted Facebook ads apparently work. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, yes, it's a treat. So keep enjoying that. I will keep, keep the work up with with your uh, working on the web development. Yeah, I used to I see will. as it's you develop great. projects. Mm -hmm. It's uh, yeah, it's, it's fun stuff, and and it keep is. keep your spirits up as you were doing well. And uh, Christine's doing well. Yeah, she's good. I mean, she's still working because she works in the the food world, so right. so it's kind of also a, an essential service, basically. But yeah, yeah that's true. we're both we're both healthy. Just just uh, there's no there's nowhere to go. All we can do is walk to the grocery <laughs> store. Yeah, I know. And and is there lineups in your grocery store? Uh, yeah, the grocery store is chill, but. There's lineups everywhere. They're starting to yeah. reopen a few things like Robson Street. They they open some of the bigger shops and there's lineups oh, they for did. every okay. shop. And yeah, uh, yeah, there's just, just lines everywhere. Wow. Yeah, it's the same here. There's a, the, In some senses, they're diminishing. That's the one thing I'm, I'm pleased with at the store. We're not having big lines. And you no, know, they've right. been fairly busy, but we haven't had to deal with lines and those yeah, kind that's of issues. Yeah. So that's cool. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for uh, spending some time with me today, Ian. It's always yeah. nice to reconnect. Thanks so much, and you enjoy the rest of your day, son. Thanks for having me, Dad. Yeah, uh, talk to you soon. THC, CBD, terpene profiles, what's in me? Oh, please explain to me. Go to the corner. Go to the corner. Oh, yeah. Go to the corner. Please explain this stuff to me. I'm kind of excited about today's Cultivar Corner. Excited because, quite honestly, I had a sneak preview. <laughs> this was one of the uh, products that I picked up uh, where I work and uh, coming home at the end of the day, decided to try some new product. This was one that everybody was talking about. 
the interesting thing about this one is they list the THC, the potential THC, as between 23 and about 28, 29%. Now, the particular match that I have, and I'll tell you what it is in just a moment, is sitting at 22.3%. But this was a pretty good example of the fact that high THC is one thing, but it is really the collection of the THC, the other cannabinoids that are there, as well as the terpenes that are in that particular strain or that particular cultivar that gives it the bang for each individual. And that was certainly the way for this one. So this is a product from Citizen Stash, and it is called Mac One. It's a small batch, craft-grown, hand-trimmed, and they did an exceptional job. My enjoyment with this particular cultivar started the moment I cracked the jar, and I went, oh, fruitiness, oh, so much citrus, smells so fresh, and the three and a half grams that I picked up was three buds in the jar. That's another good sign. And the other good sign about this is we're starting to get stuff that has been packaged reasonably close to the time of purchase. This was packaged on March 26th. That's one of the reasons I think why it is so fresh. Oh, and so fragrant. It just, it's one of the most stimulating buds I've taken a smell of out of the jar. And it really had a amazing effect. Speaking of amazing effect, <laughs> let me get some into the vaporizer and let me get a joint ready and we'll give you an indication of the high that I got from Mac One. All right, so I ran into a bit of a stumbling block <laughs> as I shut the recorder off and went into my environment and realized that my vaporizer, which if you've been listening, you know is the mighty from Stores and Pickle. I've been using it for years and it is on its last legs. It is being held together by a piece of electrician's tape. <laughs> it has fallen so many times. And while it is a very durable vaporizer, uh, it is centrally pl plastic at its core. And for some reason, when you keep continually dropping plastic onto a cement floor, it, it, it breaks and cracks. <laughs> and my Mighty is literally on its last legs. So I might not be able to get the vaporizer up and running in order to do this. So we're going to do start with the joint and see where we go from there. Let me give you the background on this particular cultivar. This is the word from Citizen Stash, and handcrafted cannabis is what they are all about. Enjoy our high THC Mac One, the latest entry in the Citizen Stash small batch series. Pesticide-free, hand-harvested and trimmed, Mac One is a powerful strain with a fruity scent well-suited for those with an elevated tolerance. So if you're one of those who heads into a store and is always looking for the highest THC you can get. Mac One is one you should probably try. It's one that I've been recommending to a lot of people and nobody has come back displeased so far. Everybody has come back and said, wow, what a good recommendation. So what is it composed of? Well, it is an indica. No, I'm sorry, it's a hybrid, 50-50 in fact. The estimated THC level between 25 and 32%, and now mine came in a little short, at 22.3% THC, but I'm not disappointed because it still had a pretty big bang for me. And I think the reason it had a pretty big bang for me is the terpene profile. We've spoken about it many times on this podcast that it's not just the THC, it's the other cannabinoids that are involved and especially the terpene profile for a particular cultivar that determines how it impacts and how it affects you. And I have kind of identified that there are a couple of terpenes that I know have an impact for me from a sativa perspective that give me that energy. Limonene, beta caryophylline, I find gives me some creativity focus. Well, guess what? Those are the top two terpenes in this particular strain. Limonene, beta caryophylline, then followed by linalool, nice little calming agent, so there's the 50% indica, and apinine, which I also find to be somewhat of an energizing terpene for me. That's the terpene profile. Here's the taste. And I do wish I was doing this in the vaporizer to truly get the taste of Mac One. And I'm going to, I did get it initially, and it was a very fruity bouquet. Really impressed with the smell. Lots of fresh terpenes in this guy, obviously. So, in addition to the terpene profile, the tremendous aroma profile that Mac One presents as soon as you open that jar, it also <laughs> has really good impact. 
and it's fast. And I think it's, again, the combination of the THC at that particular level and the various terpenes that are appropriate to this. Because here I go again. I'm on my third hit. And it is just shooting right to a euphoric high. I've got my happy eyes. They're just bursting right now. And, and it is moving right into my head. This is a very cerebral high. Uh, if it is something that you enjoy to get that buzz, yes, it's a 50-50 hybrid. But for me, it's leaning more towards a sativa, giving me lots of energy, lots of focus, lots of creativity. And now I just want to sit back, finish this joint, and let's see how the rest of it turns out. I think this will have a good impact on the rest of this podcast because it's got my energy level up. We've got a couple of stories left to do. And if you're looking for a big bang, and again, this is a small batch series, hand crafted or hand harvested and trimmed from Citizen Stash. It's called Mac One. And if you give it a try, hopefully like me, you're going to get a real big bang for your money. One of the things that I've already spoken about that I love doing about this podcast is when I hear from people about stories that are coming up, stories they would like to hear, and stories that they've heard, and how much they appreciated hearing the detail that we put out every week here on the Cannabis Podcast. This last week, I heard from a couple of people. I want to say hello to Steve. He is a longtime listener, but relatively new to cannabis, and his story is actually not all that unusual. You know, he's one of those guys that's had some nuggets of hash and the odd bud over the 25 years prior to this, but didn't really spend a lot of time getting to know cannabis. And he's been doing that now. He has been listening to the podcast, enjoying the information that we put out, and has suggested a couple of items to review. So he's been using a dry herb vaporizer for the past nine months, has Steve. And Steve has requested me to take a peek at the new vape pens that are out there, wondering whether or not that's going to be a different experience than using his herbal vaporizer. Absolutely, it's going to be a different experience. <laughs> But we'll talk about that perhaps on the next episode, and I appreciate the suggestion, Steve. And the other thing that Steve wants me to do, and that will be on an upcoming Cultivar Corner, and that's to take a look at DNA Genetics Chocolate Fondue. Uh, we carry it in the store, so easy for me to access, and we'll take a look at that in the next edition of Cultivar Corner, which will probably be on the next episode. Also, thanks to Jamie, who sent me another note. Appreciate it. Has been a listener for a while. And he appreciated the talk about the bong last week because he is a long-term bong user. And all of you guys are making me think that I've got to get a bong again just so I can experience that <gasps> big hit <laughs> once more. Uh, who knows? Maybe I want to cough my lungs out one more time just for old time's sake. So appreciate all of that. It's always nice to hear from you. And keep it up anytime you have a suggestion for someone you'd like me to interview or a topic you'd like to cover, send it along to info at CannabisPodcast.com. Now I want to touch on a subject that has become very apparent since I went back to work in the cannabis retail field. And that is the disparity between the real world and what Health Canada has determined are the regulations for edibles. So, of course, any store that is provincially regulated and federally licensed, or perhaps the other way around, federally regulated, provincially licensed, can sell edibles. But, as we all know, when that legislation came to effect in October of 2018 or 2019, the maximum per package was 10 milligrams. I understand the intent. Now, once again, all of the legislation was designed to make sure the cannabis doesn't get into the hands of kids. So stop calling the silly things gummy bears and all that stuff, because that's kind of attractive to kids. I get that. And I think that's where a lot of the decision to come out with 10 milligrams per package as a maximum came from. But here's the point that they're missing. As I have reintroduced into the retail world, there are those people that those 10 milligram or less packages of THC infused edibles are perfect for. Those people who are new to cannabis have not done edibles before. In fact, haven't done much cannabis before. And they're coming into this world exploring, looking for a good experience that makes them feel good, but doesn't lay them out in a coma on the floor. So I get that. I've talked with lots of people that have purchased the legal dosage of edibles, and they have a good time on them. But Health Canada has missed the boat here. 
because that's just one small market. The other market, and in fact, what I think is the much bigger market, are those people who have been consuming cannabis for a number of years, and their dosage for edibles is much higher than 10 milligrams. What Health Canada is doing, in my opinion, by keeping those lower levels and not addressing them with some higher dosage options, they're keeping the black market alive. I mean, the moms, the mail order marijuana shops online are still thriving. And one of the products they are thriving in is huge dose edibles. And by huge dose, I mean 100 milligrams, 200 milligrams. I've even heard some of 500, 600 milligrams. Like those are really high dosage. But for those who have been consuming cannabis for as long as they have, some of those dosages is what they need to get a buzz off the edibles. And until Health Canada finds a middle ground, gives us that low dosage at the bottom, but then also addresses the need for the higher dosage somewhere until that need is addressed, the black market is still going to thrive on the edible market because you can still get them and they're pretty easy to access. And in my opinion, those are even more dangerous than the legal market size because those are higher dosage. And if those fell into the hands of a, of a child, it would be a lot worse. So I have been advising every guest who comes into the store who talks about edibles needing a higher dosage than what is available on the legal market, write a letter to Health Canada. And I urge anybody who's listening, if you feel the same way, write a letter to Health Canada. Let's all express to them that we need to address both of these markets before we can truly shut the black market down, especially in terms of edibles. Okay, I'll jump off my soapbox now. But if you do feel that way, I do honestly wish you would write them a letter and express your opinion. I know I talked about sharing a memory in the introduction of today's episode, but I'm afraid I've rambled on too many other things. <laughs> I, I do have a story that I want to tell, and it is about the time that I, the first time that I smoked a joint, but I'm going to save that for next time. And we'll also, next time, we'll have a Cultivar Corner. We'll pick up that chocolate fondue, as Steve was asking. We'll do a Cultivar Corner on that. And if you have any other suggestions, as always, please send them along to info at CannabisPodcast.com. And that wraps it up for Episode 46 of the Cannabis Podcast. From the Cannabis Infused Studio, high above the Okanagan Valley, this was the Cannabis Podcast. Cannabis Podcast.